So welcome to Wellness Shots with Jewel. I'm Jewel, and today my guest is Dylan Holmes. Welcome, Dylan. Hi, Jewel. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so um, I'm very excited to introduce you to my viewers as um, a founder of your, Well Your Word Sources. That's how I learned about you. But mm -hmm. could you please tell us a, a little bit about yourself? How yeah. did you start this journey? Well, I started, I had another job and I just started making YouTube videos. I, well, I had read the Starch Solution. I started getting healthy, had some really amazing results, was trying to tell everybody I knew about it and nobody wanted to hear any of it. In fact, it put a strain on a lot of my relationships. So after a few months of that, I realized, man, I need to find a better outlet for this kind of information. And so I started making YouTube videos. And so I started in like 2017 making YouTube videos and with no intention or, uh, you know, understanding of where it might lead. And we have a Well Your World Facebook group, much like your own, and which is a community of like-minded people that are in there for support and learning and everything. And so for a number of years, that's a couple of years, that's what it was. It was uh, the YouTube videos and our Facebook group, and we were just kind of hanging out. And then I realized, well, a lot of the things I do in my own kitchen, I could scale up and simplify other people's, uh, you know, healthy habits and, and everything by reducing the amount of time that it takes to prepare a meal. And that's when I started making these sauces and scaling them up. And so that's been really fun. And so now I've got a whole bunch of new products we're working on and but we've got 10 sauces now. They've been out of stock for a little while, but they're going to be back next week. So I'm sure Jewel will leave you a link there where you can get hold of those sauces soon. But that's kind of what it's done. I also do a live cooking show. Um, I've got a cooking show subscription you can learn about on my website where every two times every month we go live in this kitchen. And I have multiple camera angles. You can't really see it all because I were zoomed in here. But uh, when I'm standing, you've got the whole kitchen and the stove. There's a camera on the stove and a camera on the cutting board right here. And we're all hanging out on YouTube. And uh, my girlfriend, Rebecca, will man the chan bo chat box and she'll tell me everything that's going on, every what everybody's saying, because if I'm cooking, it's kind of hard to read the chat. And uh, so it's fun. It's very interactive. Uh, everybody's having a good time. It's like hanging out with your community because most of us don't have people in our real lives that do this like us. So it's a chance for everybody to get together and make fun of me about my cooking. You know what I mean? And now this pandemic, we're so getting used to celebrating birthdays via Zoom and like cooking with each other and cheering each other. So I think this is something that, that looks like that's what you do. In yeah, I just celebrated my 35th birthday last week on a, on a group video call with my family and so yeah it's it's even our real life people are now just on a screen so what's the difference <laughs> <laughs> well happy belated birthday to you thank you uh i would like to ask you about how are you doing in this pandemic is uh, how how's your how your business is going is it um slow uh, the challenges with the pandemic are more about the supply chain than the demand from customers. I find that everybody wants their sauces. I'm getting a lot of emails every day. When are you going to have these sauces back in stock? Um, but the challenge has been with the production because they're having to do social distancing at the bottling, at the warehouse manufacturing place. And so, and then some of the bottles, like for example, this sriracha lid is a dispenser lid, which is mostly being used for all the disinfectant and uh, sanitizing stuff. So this bottle has like a really long lead time right now. So challenges like that um, have been affecting me related to the pandemic. But it seems uh, that having a food company during these times is, is a good place to be because people are all at home cooking and they want simple. They don't want to you know, if they're going from not preparing a lot of food to getting into these healthy habits, it sure is nice to have, you know, a delicious sweet mustard salad dressing at the ready so that you can just throw it together, be done, and then get back to taking care of these rugrats that are all stuck at home with you. <laughs> so when do you think you're going to be opening up? Anytime oh, soon? Should, yeah, I should. The production, we just finished on Monday. Um, so now it's just a matter of getting everything onto a truck, hopefully tomorrow, 
for where the fulfillment is for all the orders that come in. And then I'll put it back in stock as soon as we can actually fulfill orders. But I don't want to do it early because that anything could happen with the way things are going out there right now. So I'm going to, so it should be, you know, this time next week, they'll be for sale again and all, I should have good stock. So we'll see. <laughs> uh, what was your first, what was the first source that you came up with? What was your first product? Well, the first round we did like five all together and one of them was this spicy sriracha. All the sauces are SOS free. Are you totally, is your group totally SOS free or just oil uh, free? Or? Yes, most of us are SOS free, but we don't, uh, we don't judge. I mean, who are people on the, the different journey. So, so but yeah, like for this example, is the I, goal. Yeah, I am not 100% salt free. For example, in my own home cooking, I'll cook without salt, but I'll sprinkle some salt on at the table, for example, or I'll have put some olives on top. But all of my sauces, I've made sure they're totally SOS free because I want to make sure, I mean, because it's easy to add salt if you still eat salt. So I want to make sure they apply to the most number of people. And if you want to tweak it by adding a little salt or whatever, then fancy you can. Um, but the first ones I did was a sriracha, a barbecue sauce, a ketchup, and then two sort of stir fry sauces, an Indian flavored and an Asian flavored stir fry sauce where you can just have, you know, you got your rice that you might batch cook and leave in the fridge for the week. You can heat up some rice, throw some frozen veggies or whatever chopped veggies into the skillet and pour on a little sauce, sizzle it up to temperature and boom, you got a meal with rice, starch and non-starchy, a sauce to make it all taste good and you're done. So you can cook so much faster with these sauces. Um, so those are the first five. And then the second five were all of these, uh, I've got a sweet mustard dressing, a sweet heat, which is a little bit of a spicy sweet dressing, a balsamic vinaigrette, um, an Italian, and then also uh, what we call a desert Catalina. It's like a French or a Catalina, but because it's not 50% oil and high fructose corn syrup, it looks a little different. It's a darker color. Um, so those are the five dressings and they've been uh, crazy popular. I did not do enough on my first run and sold out in like a week. So hopefully we'll, I'll, I'll be, I'll have a bigger inventory going forward. Cause now I'm seeing that people really did want this, uh, this sort of ease of, you know, food prep. Um, so it's been really fun and I'm working on some blended soups where, or not blended soups, some soup mixes where you can just empty the little bag of soup into your instant pot, throw in four cups of water, turn it on and you have soup ready. Um, so things like that. I'm working on spice blends. I've got a few tasty spice blends up my sleeve still that we're working on. Um, I'm also working on a date powder, 100% date powder um, that is just dates ground up, dry, dried and ground up, and you can use them sort of as like a sugar replacement for baking or for oatmeal, what have you. Um, so those are all coming very soon. And awesome. it's, been, it's been pretty wild. It's been very fun. And I have a great audience that have been so incredibly supportive, much like I'm sure your audience is for you. And so it just makes the whole thing so much more stress-free. You know, a mistake happens. Everybody's very understanding. They know you're just been doing this for less than a year. You're just starting out. So it's been, it's been, everybody's been very understanding with me not having inventory or whatever as I work through these little growing pains. Um, but we'll get there. So I'm encouraged. Do you find that plant-based community is so supportive and like you said that the challenges, they, like everyone is so understanding that there can be technology challenges, there can be some of uh, the challenges well, in life. You, 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 your audience follows, you know, you, right? So if you're cultivating an environment like that, that you want people to be able to experience for themselves, then they're going to flock to you looking for that. So it, it shouldn't be any surprise that cool people can get cool people to join them. And uh, so I don't have much experience with other communities um, because I've never led another community, but I've been a part of other communities where I'm not leading it, where it's pretty toxic. But it sounds like when, when, we have a pretty awesome group of people, you know, you and Chef AJ and Tammy and Tom at Nutmeg Notebook and all these people that are doing groups that, you know, it's no surprise that we are, you know, have fortunate enough to have such great people that are very supportive and 
because they seek the same thing in their own lives. They want people that are going to be there for them when they're trying to establish these healthy habits, a new diet and lifestyle. That has no small effort. When you, when you change your entire life, you need somebody who's going to be there that's going to treat you right, especially when you screw up or don't understand something or need help or whatever. And if that's what Well Your World is. And so it's pretty exciting, but not surprising. I agree. Um, a little bit more about your product. So all your sauces, salt, oil, and sugar-free, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And even the dressing, like you just mentioned, a vinaigrette. How do you make it uh, without oil? Well, you know, we're used to eating things without oil, so it may not be a traditional vinaigrette like you would expect, but we've got, it's in here is obviously some balsamic vinegar, it's blended up with, um, this, this one has what, raisins? Yeah, bals the balsamic vinaigrette is raisins that are blended up in there. Um, and then a various herbs and spices, you know, chunky garlic and onion and some Italian spices and stuff to give it kind of like my Italian, but it's more balsamic based. So, you know, same with Ital the Italian dressing. Normally that would be half oil. Most salad dressings are like half oil and half sugar. And so getting rid of the oil was the hard part. The sugar is so easily replaced by whole fruit. I use dates, figs, and raisins are my three go-to fruits that I blend up whole. Nothing's been removed or anything. I'm a real stickler for making sure that it's all whole, healthy ingredients without additives and stuff like that. The only thing that is technically processed that goes into some of them would be xanthan gum to stop them all from separating and uh, sometimes maybe a little citric acid in some just because of you have to get the pH right in order for these to be shelf stable. You know, you can do anything if you just throw it in your Vitamix, but if you wanna make a product that has a two year shelf life unopened, then you have, to, you have to play a little bit with science, but not very much. I've kept it to a, a very minimal amount of uh, those kinds of process, but there are no silly ingredients um, like you might expect from some of the store-bought alternatives. And that's what I'm all about. So that's literally the base uh, idea behind all of the sauces and other products that I'll eventually make. Like the, fig, the date powder I talked about, finding a date powder, a big industrial supplier that has a good product, first of all, that doesn't clump into these big chunks of like date, dried up date, and then, but doesn't have all of the anti-caking agents and things like that. It was not easy to find. But I have found it, and I think it's the tastiest date powder I've ever had. But uh, so that's, I'm, that's what I'm all about, is keeping it whole, as unprocessed as possible, simple. But that's, but you know, removing, I think the people that eat like us are pretty well used to the flavors without the added oil. So sweet mustard, you know, it's all, it's all, you're getting the flavor of the fruit and the herbs and spices rather than all of that rich oil. None of them have nuts either, so. Mm -hmm. There was a mustard I found um, I th last year in Marshalls that had no salt, no sugar added. Unfortunately, it is discontinued. But for my another person told me about that too. Yeah, it was like a regular ballpark mustard, like a regular yellow mustard. Yes, and it tasted salty. Really? Um, yeah, it tasted it, and I love that mustard, but. I, I, I wonder if I can send you a picture and the ingredients because I have one bottle left and I, oh. want, and I really want something like that. I, re, I did send them an email asking if they're going to do it again and they discontinue. So you probably would be the right person to send some ideas to if oh, you yes. want. I'm oh. all about, I, I want to make things that people want. Believe me, it's in our best interest to do that. Um, but like the mustard dressing, with my first go at this, I would made it way too thick and I did, it wasn't very sweet. And I was like, dang, this could be a mustard product just by itself. So I, I definitely realized there are some other ways we could do some mustards and a lot of other things. Um, so it's just a matter of you know, getting it done and hearing what people want. So yeah, if you want to send me a picture of the label, I'll tinker around with it. I'm sure we can come up with something um, and it'll follow all of our same food rules. I will do. Um, another question is about your, your packaging. Uh, some people find it hard to get the sauce out. It is so good, but from this um, glass 
bottles, it, mm -hmm. sometimes it's hard to get it out. It, it, especially I'm, when it's it, almost at the end. Well, you gotta put them in the fridge upside down, that'll help, you know? And then the, the sauce will be down at the bottom at least. Um, so it's ready to pour out. But I, am, I did make my latest batch. The ketchup and the barbecue are a little bit less thick, so they're a little more pourable. But, but I have considered that. Um, the dressings obviously are, are much, you know, a salad dressing. So they pour very easily. Whereas the ketchup, yes, the ketchup was, my last batch was a little thicker. This one's still, this is from my old batch. It's a bit thicker. You can see it's still poured though. Um, and that's out of the fridge, so it's chilled and everything. But uh, I'm making them a little bit less thick just to make that easier. I, I like to use as little plastic as I can because of the whole single-use plastic thing. And though it is recyclable, technically, not, not all municipalities actually do the recycling. Some don't even recycle glass. So there's only, only so much I can do. But so anyway, that's... Yeah, I was going to ask you if, or why did you decide to, do, to go with glass uh, bottles instead of plastic yeah just like i said just trying to trying to reduce the single-use plastic mm -hmm. thing you know it's a big problem in the world and uh i'll continue to refine our own procedures and our own products so that they do the best for the animals the planets and us thank you and the good hack my in my group, in my program uh, that uh, people found, is if you, if you are almost at the end and it's hard to, uh, to get the sauce out, just put some water in, shake it, and pour it into your stew or soup or something that you are cooking. And that really uh, should, keep, sh should make your full use of the sauce. Right, because if I'm going to make them thinner in my big batch, all I'm going to do is add a little bit of water and a little bit of vinegar to allow them to pour a little more easily. So yes, you could just do the same. You don't need to add vinegar necessarily. We're only talking about maybe in a whole bottle, a tablespoon of water that you might want to add if it's too thick. But uh, the, that should be better with my next batch because I did work on that. But yeah, you can always add a little touch of water, shake it up, boom, you're done. No big deal. You're not going to taste the difference. So, thank you so much. So, what are we expecting to see on your page, and how can uh, our viewers order your product? Well, you can go to my website, wellyourworld.com, and that'll you know you'll that'll allow you to find everything. But my YouTube channel is also Well Your World. Same with Instagram. Same with the Facebook group. It's all Well Your World. So, if you search that wherever you are, you'll have no trouble find, finding me. Um, right now, like I said, you can't order. There are only a couple of sauces left in stock, but as of next week this time, they should be ready to go. Awesome. Thank you so much. We are right on time. Thank you for accepting this invitation to Wellness Shots Pleasure. with Jewel. We stream live on Wednesdays and Fridays, and then we uh, record it and uh, make it available for everyone to see. So thank you. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right. Have, have a great day, everyone.